Peloton is a closed world to most people, but there are a select few that get closer to the riders than any other outsider. The photographers who follow the cycling circus across the world day in and day out are able to record every facet of the riders' struggle. And amongst them, Graham Watson is acknowledged as one of the best. During the time I was being trained as a photographer, I bought a bicycle and eventually took up racing. And like most other young people who knew about cycling, they wanted to be the next Eddie Merckx. And very quickly, I found out I wasn't very good at cycling. And instead, I realised I was quite good at photography and I think within the space of three or four years, I was actually photographing cycling. And ever present on the circuit for almost 20 years, Watson's work has allowed him to indulge in his love for the sport. You're trying to do well for yourself, but you're trying to show the sport at its best because you love it so much. And I think that if there's a drug, that's it. Built in with that is also the way of life. You're travelling endlessly, drinking Chianti one day and a bottle of Bordeaux the next. There couldn't be anything more opposite than working in a factory. His passion has allowed him to understand that the relationship between photographer and rider is a very delicate one. And occasionally you will arrive in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong cyclist and you'll, you'll get some abuse for it. But generally they know you're, you have a job to do, they're professionals, you're, I'm a professional. And at the end of the day they like to look at the magazines and see their pictures. And I know that, that's my uh, leverage over them really. Chicken and egg situation, you need the press there, you need the, the cameras there to get to get the publicity so you get paid. But on the other hand, sometimes it can go too too far the other way and it, it gets in the way of the racing. So it can be a love-hate relationship. Graham's generally pretty professional about what he does. He gets his shots and stays out of the way. So when you're like that, the riders have got respect for that and they make time for them. This privileged position has allowed him intimate access to chronicle the agony and ecstasy of the riders and select his preferred subjects. My favourite rider probably at the moment is uh, Miguel Indurain of Spain. He's very, he's very photogenic. He's, he's a tall guy, he's dark haired. He's, most people look upon him as a princely sort of person. He's got very noble features, got a, a typical um, Navarran nose that's very long and pointed. Um, he's a real gentleman, an incredible physique. How much more can be said, really? Watson's strength is his eye for the spectacular, capturing riders dwarfed by their awe-inspiring surroundings. <laughs> However, his favourite races remain the Spring Classics, and one in particular, Paris-Roubaix. It's a crazy one-day race on the cobblestones of northern France, and there's something about it. It's, uh, it's, it's just a crazy race, and anything goes, you can... It's very dangerous for everybody, for cyclists, for photographers, for spectators. There's like a sense of, slight will go wrong, um, but don't worry about it. That's all the finish, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's not wearing yellow, which is nice. Anyway, so... so and he's not wearing yellow. What I plan to do is... Watson's eye has made him eagerly sought after by the world cycling press. Andrew Sutcliffe, editor of two of Britain's leading cycling magazines, is fully aware of how Watson's visual flair adds to a publication. I think what comes through with Graham's photography is his enthusiasm for the sport. You get a real feeling that he's a cycling sport photographer at the top of his tree. And that vast knowledge of the sport, plus an enthusiasm for the magazines that he, his pictures get placed in, um, really comes over in his work. And he has a way of photographing events that are following the same course year in, year out, with the same riders, often wearing the same jerseys. And yet each, each Monday morning, I mean, for all the staff, I think there's an excitement when Graham's pictures come in of seeing what he's got and the, the new look he's given to often very similar situations.
For the best part of two decades, Watson has shared life on the road with the riders, subjected to the same route, weather, discomforts and dangers. However, he retains the same enthusiastic admiration for the riders as when he first started. You can't follow them for seven hours a day through all weathers and not be, you know, admiring of them. I mean, they are incredible athletes. Uh, you very rarely get to meet them as, as real humans. Um, sometimes when they retire, they, they come back as real people and you can talk to them. But at the time, you really just admire what they do and also you respect what they do. You don't really get um, too... Uh, complacent about it. Although you become friends a little bit and talk to them almost as friends, they are stars and you, you never forget that. Despite the thousands of landscapes and intimate moments that Watson has captured over the years, the search for the one perfect picture will still remain. But if there is a perfect picture, or if I'm looking for it, it's not, it's not just a picture of a cyclist grimacing or doing something, because that could be anywhere in the world. It's, it's a picture of a cyclist giving it his, his very, very best, probably in the Tour de France, with a, with a big mountain behind him in the background, which really puts cycling apart from other sports. It's not, it's not a football pitch, it's not a, a tennis court, it's, it's up there in the mountains.